Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to take your audio from this. So we're trying out these two microphones and this is what they sound like at just over 60 miles an hour. To this. Alright, welcome back everybody. We just checked out of the campground. And while the weather did get a lot nicer earlier, it is back to the same gray, nasty skies. Stick around. Now for years we've struggled with audio and I've tried everything. I've tried Cena backpack, I've tried stereo microphones, mono microphones, Purple Panda, Sony, you name it, I've tried it all. And they all had their flaws. And I always find myself going back to the Cena backpack because it was decent audio and it was the most convenient to be honest. Uh, you had the audio right there on your, on your video and you didn't have to do any syncing or anything else. But the issue I kept having was that it was unreliable. Sometimes it would work, and when it did, it worked okay. Sometimes you had issues where I would get no audio. I would get all kinds of weird noises in the background. It just wasn't reliable at all. And the one thing I didn't like about it was that Mrs. Two Wheeler's audio wasn't the same as mine. It was different quality of audio the way it was recorded. And that's by design. That's the way Cena made it. One of them was considered high definition. The other one wasn't. Recently, while doing more research into different microphones and audio solutions, I had an epiphany. If the Bluetooth microphone on my Cena headset was good enough to transmit clear audio, why can't I use that for vlogging? Whenever I was on a phone call with people, they wouldn't know I was on a Bluetooth headset. They thought I was home or in my office. So the quality was there. Now I just needed to transfer it over to the camera. And that's where I came across some issues. Issue number one was this plug right here. Now this looks like a standard headphone jack, but it's not, and I'll show you. Over here I have the Rode Audio. Now if you can see, it's just too little to fit in this. So that sent me on a search for adapters. Now this piece, this is a 2.5 millimeter, and everything standard today, microphones and headphones, the majority of them use a 3.5 millimeter. So I ended up finding this little adapter right here, and this transforms it from a 2.5 millimeter to a 3.5 millimeter, which connects perfectly. So I was able to solve that problem. But now I had a different problem. That was great for me, but I had an issue with Mrs. Two Wheeler. The issue was, how am I gonna get Nina's audio into the camera? Enter Rode Wireless Go 2. This was a solution I needed. I had the previous one, the Rode Wireless Go, but the Rode Wireless Go, the original, only had one transmitter, one receiver. And I needed something that had two transmitters going into one receiver. So I picked it up, tried it out, and this was the result. The issue with passports, all the passport agencies being completely backed up. Uh, we had to call in favors and... Well, the, the point was during COVID last year, we were not able to bring them in. And in the meantime, their passports expired. Right, their passports were expired. Not bad, right? So now I'm going to share with you all the pieces you need and my settings to get your audio to that next level. I'm going to do kind of a two-part setup here. One of them is going to be for a single rider. One of them is going to be for a dual rider. Now, a dual rider can be a pillion or a passenger behind you, or it can be another buddy riding. It doesn't make a difference. As long as you're not too far apart from each other, you'll still be able to capture good audio. So the first thing you're going to need is a camera. It can be a GoPro. It doesn't have to be. It can be a different one. Anything that has a method of connecting a microphone. So as long as there's a microphone input of some sort, you'll be able to do it. With the GoPros, as we all know, the older ones, you needed the adapter. And with the GoPro 8, 9, and 10, you have the accessory mod. Now you can still use the old adapter, but this is a lot more convenient because you have it right in there. You don't need to strap on that dongle and have it hang in or rig it in order to make it work. Second piece you need is the Rode Wireless Go. Now the Rode Wireless Go can be optional, but it does make for a better setup, less wires, less things to worry about. And another big advantage is that you can actually stash this away someplace that's waterproof. And if you're caught in the rain, you don't have to worry about your GoPro getting ruined because the GoPro is waterproof, but once you put it in the media mod, it's no longer waterproof. It might be water resistant to some extent on a light shower, but 
it's not waterproof by any means. Now the second part you need is a microphone. Um, I went with the original Cena microphone. The same one I use on the helmet for regular calls. I bought an extra one and I put it on the other side and that's the one I use for my audio. You can either have this somewhere on the helmet. And the way I did that is I actually found a little plastic cold shoe adapter. I just stuck it on the side of the helmet and I can mount the Bluetooth receiver right there. Issue is when it does rain, you don't want it on your helmet. This is not waterproof. So I have a solution for that too. You can use an extension to go from the adapter to the Rode Wireless Go, and you can have this somewhere that's waterproof. You can put it in any compartment on your motorcycle. You can put it in your tank bag. You can even throw it in a Ziploc, keep it dry. Now that's one method of doing it. The only thing I'm not crazy about is if it does rain, then I have to worry about removing it, putting it somewhere safe, which means I have to pull over. And it's not the ideal way to capture the best audio. And the reason for that is the preamps on the GoPro, while pretty good, they're not bad, are not the best. If you really want the best possible audio, you want to pick up one of these, and this is an external recorder. This particular one I went with is a Tascam DR10L, and the reason I went with it is for the size. It's very compact. You can see it's actually smaller than the GoPro, so it doesn't take up a lot of space, and the audio quality on it was very good. So what I did is, this is the second, this is the second option. Instead of having the Rode Wireless Go go to your GoPro, you can disconnect this, have your GoPro on your helmet as usual. You don't even need to use the media mod and you can plug the receiver directly to the recorder. And now you can really have this out of the way. You don't need to touch it. You don't need to access it. You can hit the record button, leave it alone, keep it in your pocket someplace that's waterproof and you're good to go. You don't have anything to worry about. The downside to that is you will have one long audio recording. So that's going to make it a little bit more difficult when you're doing the edit. But the sound is there, the quality is there, that's how you get top-notch recording. Now if you really wanted, you could technically start and stop it every time you're recording. I don't want to deal with that, I want to be on the bike, set it and forget it, and have my audio when I get home. I'll spend the extra time editing out the parts that I don't need. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go over the settings I use. Now the only thing you, you need to keep in mind is while the settings might work good for you, it could vary from helmet to helmet depending on how much wind noise you get. Some helmets are just noisier than others. There's nothing we can do about that. We actually have that issue where Nina's helmet is a lot noisier than mine. So my workaround is whenever I'm talking and I do most of the talking on the channel, I usually just mute her track and just leave mine. And when we're having a conversation, I'll bring her track in and I'll try to clean it up as much as I can, as best as I can. But we are gonna get her a new helmet, something that's a little quieter. I'm thinking of going with the same as mine, the Showy Neotech. It's a great helmet, it's pretty quiet, and it does the job. So now, as far as the settings go, I like to use 5K at 60 frames per second, and I use the Super View. I keep the Hyper Smooth on Boost, which is the highest stabilization. The duration I keep on No Limit. I don't use the scheduled capture, I don't use the timer, and I don't use the hindsight. One thing you do want to turn on is your Pro Tune setting. Very important, go into bit rate, change that to high. That'll give you the best quality possible. My shutter I leave on automatic, EV compensation minus 0.5. Y balance I just leave it on auto, I don't want to deal with that. And I keep my ISO minimum at 100, ISO maximum at 1600. And the reason I do that is I found that at the lower setting, which is 800, it's the next one down. If it's a little bit dark, just past sunset, it starts to get a little grainy, it's too dark. So I like to have that extra brightness, even though it might introduce a little more noise. Sharpness I keep to medium, color I keep on vibrant. And there's a setting in there for raw audio, which a lot of people would think to turn on. That would be your instinct. Keep it off. You don't need it. All that does is it produces an external track separately from your video. It just takes up more memory. If you're going to use the recorder, you're going to have that external track anyway. And even if you don't, the Rode Wireless Go actually keeps a recording of your track. So if you ever have any issues where the sound didn't go through, there was interference or whatever, you can always go back and download that track from the Rode Wireless Go and you have a backup. Now let's go over to the more important ones, which is the audio. Now there's basically only two steps to this. You have the receiver, and if you're gonna use the recorder, you have the settings for the recorder. 
Now the receiver I keep at minus 18 decibels. I found that that's the sweet spot. I've checked it at every single level. That one worked out best for me. It's a great balance between the sound of the motorcycle and my audio. So minus 18, that's where you want to keep that. Now, as far as the recorder, I keep it on medium. I found that that gives me the best results. Again, if your helmet's a little more noisier, you have more wind noise, you might want to play around with the settings to dial in what works best for you. You might want to turn it down a little bit more than medium, keep it on low. It took me weeks and weeks of trying different parts out. I mean, these, these little adapters, you have no idea how many I went through until I found the right one. I've literally tried probably about 25 or 30 different types of adapters until I found the right one. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to get your audio to the next level. Now I'm gonna leave links for everything I talked about in the description, should you wanna pick it up and try it out for yourself. Now if you got anything from the video, appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button for us. It does help us out, only takes a second. Or if you know anybody else who's looking to up their audio game, share the video with them, all right? So with that said, I'm Mike, Mr. and Mrs. Two-Wheeler, and we'll see you on the road.